This is essentially an outdoor park created called the Cal Calvary. Um, meant to animate and display outdoors in nature. Calvary, the Stations of the Cross. Um, and it is absolutely beautiful in terms of the nature, the gardening, and the combination of that with statues. You can look out and really just contemplate some of these moments. There's the olive tree. So many parables that speak of the olive tree and of course such a feature of Palestine, the Holy Land. Here we'll have the judgment of Jesus. Pontius Pilate in the Praetorium. Looks like a centurion in the background. And Jesus there, half naked, and eyes cast down. With Pontius Pilate looking stern and believing that he has that power that false sense of human power, which is often tainted and mixed with so many evil impulses. And yet we have the Son of God who is, who can move mountains and is part of the divine trinity that has created what we have learned in the last half century is just an enormous universe full teeming with stars billions of stars and planets and asteroids and black holes and things that bend time and space that boggle the mind that boggle our human mind and we're finding it out there there was a time not too long ago where science thought that everything really could be understood by the human mind and sort of a mechanical sense of a very small universe. But what we're learning, of course, is that physics, the idea of matter as energy and energy as oftentimes bending time and space, that the world is truly divine, mysterious, and full of wonder that can't be tamed, domesticated by the smallness of the human mind. And that's why when Jesus came in a small form to feel the fear and to feel the pain and the human emotion and the limitations of the human mind because even though I think you know when he was divine that he was still experiencing in those moments limitations of human comprehension even though he had this um, obviously the, the the teachings that are the basis of our of our spiritual principles and yet um, the there I believe that there were still limitations there um, in his incarnated form uh, as and, and separate from God the Father on earth um, needing to communicate back and forth having inter the intercession of an angel as we'll see uh, coming up but here he is in the garden of Gethsemane and um, 
I'm going to translate the French. The scene happens at night in a garden on the flank of a hill called the Mount of Olives to the east of Jerusalem. It was also called Gethsemane, which in Aramaic means the uh, presser of olives or the olive press. Jesus prays on his knees, his eyes turn toward the small um, hill where we find an angel holding a cup. This cup or chalice is the representation of the pain that he must drink all to the end. Jesus seems to accept with tranquility and in so doing accepts his destiny. Three of his disciples, Peter, John, and James the Minor, who accompany him are sleeping not too far. Sometimes Jesus will wake them up. At the same time, a group will come in the night. Those are the men that Judas sent to arrest Jesus. And I think that that over there is Peter, because he has the sword which he'll use to cut off the ear of that um, servant of the high priest, if you recall that. And then John, just because he's got that, I don't know, beatific, um, serene, uh, he looks like he is the beloved. And there's the angel with the chalice appearing in this man-made grotto out of the stones. And then we have a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. There is no greater love than to set down one's life for one's friends. We can look out and have that vista. There are all the stations of the cross as well. I think that's Simon taking up Jesus' cross. 